Guys, how's your water quality? You look after the water, the water looks after the fish. This video is all about testing your water. But before we do that, check out this view. Build a koi pond, build it so it's part of the landscape. Today we're going to be using the API Master Test Kit to test pH, nitrite, phosphate, and ammonia. Right, so let's get on with it. The first thing to mention is to make sure your uh, tubes are very clean. I'll clean them instantly before each time. You can see immaculate you'll wash them out several several times at least to make sure there's no uh, residual uh, chemicals left in there because if there is that can first of all it can tank your test second of all it could introduce some pretty harmful stuff into your pond which you obviously don't want Careful, so I'm in a slightly uh, uneven uh, blue layer stone surround. Even though I know that my tubes are clean, what I'm not going to do is if I overfill to the line, I'm not going to then just pour that excess back into the pond, just just in case. There's just no point. Right, so that's your four tubes. So I'm going to start with actually a high range pH test solution because I've got my pH seems to be creeping up a little bit. So I'm going to start with that and then um, I've got a wide range and a, and a normal test pH test solution. So I can do that as well. So hey, all the instructions are on the bottle, add five, and in the, and in the packet as well, it tells you whether, whether the shake, how to mix, and all that sort of stuff. So, first one, add five drops. One, two, three, four, five. Lids back on always, and then remove out the way what you're not using. Lids back on clearly in case it falls over or you have an issue with it or whatever, and you know you don't want to be dropping chemicals straight into your pond, that's bad. Right, so that's the first run, high range, pH. Right, second one, nitrite. This is five drops. One, two, three, four, five. Move back on. Out the way, lid on, give it a nice shake. Sometimes the air shaking like that is fine, but depending on the seal of your lid, sometimes you can find you can get some drops coming out the side. So just turning upside down like that allows the air to mix it up for you. That's nitrite. Looking good already. Ammonia next. This is a two bottle one that you've got to do. Bottle one at eight. And then the second one, I know you've got to shake. It says you've got to shake it for about a minute. I'll do that now. I'll just skip that part of the video. And this is eight drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You just apply a little bit of pressure, it starts coming out and then maintain that pressure and you can you know, ensure that you get the same uh, size drops then. Uh, another eight drops of bottle two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have to be careful that one. The viscosity is different, so it comes out really easy. Right, 
ammonia. Looking pretty good. Uh, next thing I'm going to go for is phosphate. To one and six. Even if it doesn't say in the instructions to give it a shake, it'll always give it a bit of a shake anyway. Phosphate bottle is really quite a thick fluid, so you have to squeeze it really quite hard. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's back on. Move on to the solution, give it a nice shake as before, and then leave them all to settle. So you have it, high range pH, nitrate, ammonia, and phosphate. Just leave that for a minute, cut the video, come back, and then we'll check the readings. A couple of butterflies. All look fantastic. Love the white one. Got that from a proper small fish. Yeah, so I'm back. Uh, I've left it a minute or two, and now it's for us to test the readings. So I'm going to go with high range pH first. It is, sorry about the quality of this, it's left out in the rain, so it's that column there. You know, the colours aren't going to come out perfectly on the camera, but you can get an idea. And then I can tell you as well, it's, it's I would say, between 7.4 and 7.8. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's a tight, you know, if you wanted to be pedantic, it's a tad on the high side, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to put that back. Nitrate, I mean, you come to know these colours after a while anyway. But nitrate, nitrite, sorry. Nice sky blue is exactly what you want. Zero or tr absolute trace elements of nitrite. Perfect. Ammonia next. Uh, sorry to say it, but a nice straw, sort of hydrated urine colour. <laughs> uh, there it is. Basically, what, you want, what you're looking for is no, no green tints to this. If you start to get any sort of elements of green, then you're going up the parts of a million of, of ammonia. That tells me, zero. Well happy with that. And then phosphate. Again, if you've got a nice light green color, you've got no or very low phosphate in your water. I'm just gonna check this up close so I can get it. For me, that's, that's somewhere between zero and 0 0.25 parts per million. There you go. That's why you've got to be careful of your surroundings when you're working next to the pond. So well happy with that as well. So there you go. I can't recommend it enough. Um, you know, if you're going to get into coil fish keeping in any sense, the water quality is what it's all about. You're there to maintain that water quality, not necessarily. And, and that is by de facto looking after the fish. So get yourself a decent water test kit. Don't use any of the strips, the rubbish. Um, API, pond, master test kit. And test it, you know, once once a week or or perhaps more often if you're a little bit worried or if, or if the fish are starting to exhibit some strange behaviours. Works a treat. Get it done. Hopefully that helped. Ciao. Maybe one last piece of advice. As soon as you're done, clean your test tubes out. Don't leave them uh, with the uh, chemicals in the water uh, lying around in them because it can just start to taint the glass. It doesn't make any sense. So as soon as you're done, clean them out well. Yeah, hi guys, so you've seen the water quality, right? It's absolutely on point. And I put that down to this filtration system that I installed about a year ago. It's been like that pretty much ever since uh, with no spikes or anything like that. It's been fantastic. Uh, so the proof's in the pudding. You know, you look after your water, the water looks after your fish. There it is, pretty simple bog, wetland, organic, biofilter, doesn't really matter what you want to call it, as long as the water gets to go through plants, uh, root systems, and they take all that, all the bad nutrients out for you. Uh, and of course the bacteria in, in, the, in the brush filter that I've got as well, they work together. It's absolutely awesome. All I've seen.